Welcome to Thessaloniki, Greece. We're going to show you how to enjoy one epic day in the city. Thessaloniki is the first port on our seven-day cruise with Celestial Cruises, round trip from Athens and visiting the Greek islands in Turkey. Thessaloniki is the second largest city in Greece after Athens and the capital of the geographic region of Macedonia. Its history goes way back to 315 BC, founded by Cassander and named after his wife, Thessalonique, the sister of Alexander the Great. This city has been influenced over the years by Greek, Ottoman, and Hebrew communities, and it's a destination for lovers of art, culture, and history. We'll be spending the day in the historic city center, walking around everywhere we can on foot. Justin and I started our day walking on Thessaloniki's seaside promenade. It's newly renovated and such a wonderful place to go for a stroll. The first historical place we reached was the White Tower. It was built in the 15th century after the fall of Thessaloniki to the Ottomans. Over the years, it's had many uses, including a prison and execution site for convicts. If you choose to go inside the tower, there's a small museum in there, and it's also possible to climb the stairs up to the top for a panoramic view. Continuing along the waterfront past the White Tower, we stumbled upon a monument to the famous ruler and military leader Alexander the Great. This bronze equestrian statue is a whopping 11 meters tall, including its pedestal. In addition to the statue, there's an embossed wall and five shields, symbolizing one of his great battles and his impressive army. The waterfront has some modern sculptures too, including the umbrellas. Get your camera ready, it's one of the most photographed areas of Thessaloniki. It was created by a Greek sculptor when Thessaloniki was the European capital of culture in 1997. Each umbrella is 42 feet tall and slightly tilted. Now, when you walk around Thessaloniki, it's like visiting a big open-air museum. There are Greek, Roman, and Byzantine ruins scattered throughout the city center that makes you wonder what the city used to be like. In the heart of the city lie the ruins of the Palace of Galerius, which was one of the most impressive structures in all of Thessaloniki. The palace is one of the city's most important archaeological sites and dates back to the 4th century. It was once part of a massive complex that was over 9,000 square meters. Much of it was buried during the city's development over the years, but you can still see some of the uncovered remains at Navarino Square. Across from the ruins is the Navarino Creperie. We stopped by for a sweet treat, noticing that they serve vegan crepes here with Nutella and Kinder Bueno filling. It was so delicious, we loved it. After our snack, we continued down the street, admiring modern street art and murals juxtaposed by more ancient ruins. We reached the next monument, the Arch of Galerius, also known as Camera. It's a triumphal arch built by the city of Thessaloniki between the years 298 and 305 to commemorate Galerius's victorious campaign against the Persians. It was once an eight-pillared gateway forming a triple arch, though only three pillars survive today. Sitting opposite of the Arch of Galerius lies a walkway leading to a Greek Orthodox church. Continuing past the Arch of Galerius, you can't miss another impressive monument, the Rotunda. The Rotunda was one of the earliest Christian monuments in the Eastern Roman Empire. This massive circular structure has had many uses over the years, including a temple, a Christian basilica, and a Muslim mosque. Both the Arch and the Rotunda are UNESCO World Heritage Sites. I hope you've enjoyed our brief tour of the best things to see in Thessaloniki in a day. There's obviously so much more to see here, so we'll have to return. This city really left us wanting more. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to see more of our videos from Greece coming soon.